Uh, direct democracy is uh, better than representative democracy, and so if you're trying to represent the will of the people, it would be better to have direct votes, which were not possible in the, in the old days because you had, you know, uh, you had to mail things around and the information moved very slowly. But in uh, in an electronic society where information moves instantly, you can re you can represent very directly the will of the people. And I think this diminishes the ability of special interests to influence things in a way that is contrary to the will of the people. So. Uh, I think that's what I would, I would say is probably good. Also, uh, the laws are in, laws have a um, infinite lifetime, so you have to. I think or it's probably a good idea to uh, have something in the in the voting system that accounts for uh, the the infinite lifetime of laws and the sort of inertial effect of laws. So perhaps it would be good for all all rules to have a, a inherent sunset provision. So. They would automatically expire unless they get revoted as being correct, um, and then uh, maybe have it ha have a hysteresis where, if um, in order for something to become a law, maybe it requires 60% vote, but at any point 40% or more can remove the law. Um, this sounds sort of anarchist, I suppose, but <laughs> I'm kind of pro-anarchist. <laughs> Um, so um, I would say try it in try it in the U.S. and then we will follow. You know, <laughs> I, I think gen generally fewer rules are better than more rules. Um, yeah, but um, anyway, that's that's my rough guess at you know if, if if you had to read you know recompile on on democracy, how would you do it to better represent the true will of the people, which I think is, is the intent of democracy. So. I mean, a lot of the time, well, the best thing that government can do is just get out of the way. Um, and so that, I'd say that's the, that's the default, um, probably the best thing to do. Then um, after that would be ensuring that uh, there are not artificial monopolies. Uh, there is a fertile ground for startups. Um, and because the, 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 what can happen over time is that you can get regulatory capture by large companies. Uh, where they influence the, re the regulators and the legislators uh, to favor uh, their, their their situation, and then you have a forest of redwoods, and you just can't the the, the little uh, little trees can't grow. So it, it, we really want to have an environment that that tends to favor uh, smaller companies and startups. Um, the big companies really don't need the support, um, but they will they will generally try to. Uh, work the system to establish a, a monopoly of some kind. Uh, we, we should be wary of that. Um, you know, in, in general, it's like, I, I think we, we, we could consider uh, changing the, the way we think of things from, say, capitalism versus communism and, and think more in terms of feedback loops. Uh, so is, uh, is a given organization, uh, does a given organization, government or, or, or a commercial, have good feedback loop for the customer? Um, whether it's the, the people as a whole or you know wh whoever the customers are, and if you've got like a duopoly or oligopoly, they're they're generally going to be ha have a weak uh, response to uh, their customer, um, and if they're monopoly, they're going to have the weakest response uh, to to the customer. And the, the reason that that government, I think, uh, is often the worst at responding to uh, the the customers being the people is that they're a monopoly that can't go bankrupt or usually cannot go bankrupt. So there's not there's not really a, a, a cleansing process for a government uh, short of a catastrophe. It's government's responsibility to establish the rules of the game and then ensure that those rules are, in, are properly enforced. Like sort of like the, the the referees on the field and you know it's like it's just like um, you know football or something. Then you got the rules, you got the referees. You got to make sure the, the rules are the right rules and the, the referees are enforcing the rules. I think. That's, a, that's an important role for, for government uh, to ensure that the rules are correct and that the incentives uh, are what we actually want them to be for, like I said, the long-term maximum happiness of the people into the future. Um, where I think government does not do a great job is when they want to not just be a referee on the field, they want to be a player on the field. That you, you want the government to be carefully focused on ensuring the rules of the game are what we actually want them to be, that we're getting rid of old rules, this is very important, which is not occurring, um, 
and that the the rules are enforced such that we have uh, ethical behavior of, of companies. I think it's incredibly important that government focus on incenting the outcome, not the path. Tesla and SpaceX obviously have massive operations in, in California. In fact, it's worth noting that Tesla is the last car company still manufacturing cars in California. Uh, SpaceX is the large, the last aerospace company still doing significant uh, manufacturing in California. So there used to be over a dozen car plants in California, and California used to be the center of aerospace manufacturing. My companies are the last two left. What kind of government do you envision for the first Martian colony? <laughs> and what's your title? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Emperor or God Emperor? I don't know. <laughs> Might be too much. I don't know. Um, if, if you want, after you watch my jokes here, not everyone gets irony. You know, must remember. Must remember. <laughs> um, so I, I think the, the I think most likely the the form of government on Mars would be somewhat of a direct democracy, where. Um, you vote on issues where, where people vote directly on issues instead of going through representative government. In, in, you know, when the United States was formed, representative government was the only thing that was logistically feasible because peop, there's no way, it was no way for people to communicate instantly. Um, a lot of people didn't even have really access to uh, mailboxes or there wasn't even really a, the post office was very, very primitive. A lot of people couldn't write. Um, so you had to have some form of representative democracy uh, or things just wouldn't work at all. Um, but I think on Mars most likely it's going to be people, everyone votes on every issue and that's how it goes. Uh, there are a few things I'd recommend, which is keep laws short. Um, long laws, it's like that's, that's something suspicious is going on if there's a long law. <laughs> you know, if, if, you're, if the size of the law exceeds the word count of Lord of the Rings, something's... <laughs> <laughs> which it does, amazingly, then it's like something's wrong. Um, so there should be a limit to the size of the law that it should be able to digest it. Like, how come you can read the Constitution and all of the amendments, like you can read those in maybe an hour? And, and, and we govern so much of our civilization by that, and yet modern law is this ob obtuse, super boring tome that's indecipherable to us anyone. So, I think um, direct democracy, laws, laws that are comprehensible. Um, I think having some kind of hysteresis on, like it should be easier to remove a law than create one, because things just get to inertia. You have to have something that's going to overcome inertia. So probably, I don't know what the right number would be, maybe it's like 60, 40, maybe it requires 60% to get a law in place, but any number above 40% can remove a law. Um, otherwise, you just get laws just accumulate over time, accumulate over time, and it, it, it's sort of like Gulliver, where you just get trapped by all these tiny strings and you can't move. Um, you get hardening of the arteries of civilization with, law, with rules and rules and rules and rules. Um, so it should be just easier to get rid of a rule than, than to put one in. Um, maybe they should even have like a, some kind of sunset clause so that they just automatically expire unless there's enough of an impetus to, to keep them around.